everybody. Thanks for watching. This is our Lego 101 brought to you by Prozit Business Consulting. Right now, EJ is explaining to the team what phase one is going to look like for a Lego 101 event. There are multiple phases to this event and between each of them, we do a training to explain what is going to be expected for the next event. This is a really good way of explaining how to use 5S, how to use Kaizen, and also how we can use continuous improvement to our advantage every single day. We will be utilizing tack time, cycle time, number of parts through, and focusing on an actual demand that the simulation provides. The phases are meant to be clumsy, and almost every time employees instantly want to change layout and job duties. This is excellent. Progressively, the phases get more organized and we start to see real results. Everything shown in this simulation is exactly how Prozit would tackle a situation through time studies, workflow, and work balance. All right, enough talking. Let's get right into it. There you go. So right now, in the very first part, EJ is explaining to each of the employees how their specific section is going to be built. At first, it's a little confusing to just see blue parts, but everyone gets to build one. And as you can see, she's going to walk over and put it over to the next section. <laughs> what are you new here? <laughs> All right, I got time on this too. Each of the yellow bricks is something that in his station he has to add. So if you looked at her, she only had to put two parts together. Now it looks like he's got to put five parts on there. So almost immediately we can see that there's imbalanced work content involved here. Oh, got another delivery. So she's going to make batches of five and will continually deliver more parts to her downstream customer. So already we can see where the deficiencies are. The one gentleman mentioned one piece flow and how the batches of five are actually hurting production. EJ does an excellent job at this event uh, to keep things light, joke around, and having a good time. You gotta keep building. Oh, oh, that's really? <laughs> you got all excited about building the water. Now I just poured. Look at the work piling up. We have a good time doing this, and a lot of times there's some confusion whether to keep building, whether not keep building, uh, because first it feels wrong to just dump all of these parts onto someone else. But the idea of the simulation is that we do this every single day without even realizing it to our downstream customers internally. Can you put a zero there, please? Yes. Good, and that would be a time of, let's say, zero. Okay, rework. So at the end of each phase, we have a little bit of a ship count, and that's what this guy is doing right now. He's counting how many planes he got, how many defects he got, and how many planes he was able to actually quality control and ship out. So now I'm looking at the ship count that they have and all the work in process that they have. So you can see that there's massive batches over here in the other station, he is absolutely overloaded and workstation four has nothing going on. So yeah, that's the end of phase one. We'll move on to phase two. If it's not necessary, get it out of the way. So usually after the first phase, everyone kind of breaks the ice and people start volunteering. They start coming up with some of their ideas. And what this gentleman came up with was to use another person on the line to go ahead and get the materials because in the first phase, he wasn't doing anything, quote unquote. However, EJ cautions him on it because the workflow wasn't laid out right, so it looked like he had no work. This happens every single day. Be careful about what we indicate as a problem now. It was designed in order to have six people do the work, including what he has to do. So if we reallocate him to moving materials, who's going to do his job once you guys increase throughput, right? The one thing we do is we have to get up and we have to move loads, right? What else could we do about that? Don't you have layout over here? He's referring to a whiteboard that we have all the improvement opportunities we can go ahead and do. So one of their main things was layout. And initially, that's what everyone sees is how bad the layout is. After the phase two short training, EJ preps the team for the next phase. All the planes have been taken apart and everything is reset to start fresh with a new factory. All right, let's move into phase two of the simulation. You fix somebody else's problem. I need you to keep track of that because when we come down here and we say rework, I want to know how many of these things internally did we have to rework. The biggest issue with my line is the one piece flow. So this gentleman asked about one piece flow. He is saying that they have tried one piece flow and they have tested it in his area and it just doesn't work. While there are many factors that may confirm his initial thought, 
The bright side to this is that he is now trying to apply what he is learning in this class to his everyday work life. But the how is tripping us up. Yeah. That's a perfect attitude. But we, can learn, we can work on it then. Now phase two has begun and the clock has started. You may notice that some people are not in their phase one positions. The team decided to change the flow a little bit to reflect the part that they are making. What if all of a sudden she gets an order for green ones and you may all be sucked down with blue? During the event, it is common to have team members thinking even further ahead. In this case, this gentleman asked about making sub-assemblies. EJ explains that yes, they can be done and in some cases are necessary, but some situations can actually hurt a production line with sub-assemblies. <laughs> we are about three minutes in. The workflow has increased moderately, but the final station, which is inspection, as you can see, hasn't received a single airplane yet. EJ brings up a really good point here about fixturing. The most inefficient way to produce something is by using your hand as a vice. This gentleman realized that he can push harder and more accurately by placing his parts down on the table rather than holding them in his hand. Finally, the inspection station got their first batch of planes. And what they're doing here is handing it back. There seems to be some sort of defect and they previously determined that if there's an issue, either inspection can fix it or they can send it back to the operator to have them fix it themselves. Once it's all good, he'll be able to ship all five of these planes as one batch. One minute left. So with one minute remaining, these completed planes have been inspected and are now ready to ship. The shipper here in the red shirt will count all the planes to make sure he has the right batch size and write it down on his sheet. Note that this is a massive improvement from their first assembly line. As you can see, they shipped zero on their first go around. The second round has come to a close. We discovered that there was one defective plane that got through quality control and actually shipped to the customer. At this point, the team will now count up their whip or work in process and they will compare it to their previous phase. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay? I'm gonna put it right there. You gonna reach that way, all right? All right there you go. You go with that? Yes. All right. I'd like for you guys to negotiate. All right, we are back from the room, and we are ready for our final round of training. The team learned about Kanban, work balance, and efficient layouts. They also got to choose how the production line was set up, and will now be utilizing proper work balance. This round, as well as the other two, have been consistent with the demand and the time frame being the same. What materials do you guys need? You need, I need, I need these. that one. You need these? Does anybody mm -hmm. else need these? Before any work can get started, the team is setting up how the material delivery is going to be. Each employee can see on their drawings what type of block they need and are planning accordingly. Just like we would in a real world shop floor. In, in lean manufacturing, we, the, the clock is not something we really pay attention to. It's all the workflow. So what I want you guys to do now is listen to the Kanban. EJ is explaining how the Kanban card is supposed to work. In real lean manufacturing, everything should be a pull system. Anyone going through this course will learn what a pull system is. Here we are going to replicate that. One piece flow, put in the Kanban. Good. Now, there you go. Now it's empty so you can keep working. As soon as that Kanban's full, you stop working. The Kanban is assigned to either go do work or stop working. The post-it notes are the staging areas. In a real world situation, some staging areas might only be big enough for one piece of material. What he showed them here is that the Kanban is now your customer. Nothing else should matter in this scenario. If the card is empty, fill it. If there is something there, don't do anything. The end customer, which happened to be shipping, pulled their first piece. This was only done because the line was preloaded. Shipping is the start of the assembly line, contrary to belief. This action cascades up the line and at each Kanban card that becomes vacant then gets filled until the order is complete. 24 seconds, we already have two done, so you're following the tack time right now. So in this final round, everyone continues to work, like I said, until the time limit is up. This happens to be six minutes. As you can hear me say that they were meeting the tack time of each plane. In this scenario, we have a brand new layout, new workflow, and the proper capacity. Everyone on the team is also aware of their specific job and who or what they need to satisfy. What wastes were we able to eliminate by going to one piece flow? In, in process. With huge. Only four pieces in process. It could have been 14, 
we designed the flow. I could have put more post-it notes out there. We could have had a couple more. What if we doubled the work in process and we got to eight, which is still one eighth of what the previous round this is a good thing to note that all of our energy in the previous layouts were all going to building with instead of actually getting stuff out the door. We have to have an appetite for perfection. What that means is if we say things like it's only this, it's only 10 feet, it's just a fish wound, it's serious. So at the end we like to get everybody together and we sum up everything we have learned and we try to see if there are any immediate ways that employees that were on the team can implement these tactics learned in the simulation. This has nothing to do with how many planes you can build, but all in the principles behind how we build them. Many times, companies either want to do another simulation with a different group of people. In this case, we actually did a two-day LEGO 101 with two different groups, or have pros that come in and do a specific event that we offer. LEGO 101 is an introduction to the lean methodology with the intention to get companies' juices flowing on how they can improve. We have a great time doing this with new people every single day. And at the end of LEGO 101, your team can expect to learn the basics of 8 Wastes, Kaizen, 5S, and workflow management through layout, time studies, and work redistribution. Everything in Lean stems from the 8 Wastes, never forget that. If you were interested in this simulation or any of the products, feel free to reach out on our website or leave a comment down below. The links to our website will be in the description. This is Pros of Business Consulting. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys were awesome. Have some fun. Enjoy lunch. Act like you deserve it.